time. And he fed us and gave us water. Saying, why hast thou brought us into this wilderness to kill us? It had been better for us to have served the Egyptians than to die in this wilderness. Then had I pity upon your mornings. He said, I have pity upon us mornings and gave you manna to eat. So ye did eat angels' food bread. When you were thirsty, did I not cleave the rock? And waters flowed out to your field? You was thirsty, told Moses to speak unto the rock? That's, Moses got in trouble there. He was getting on his nerves. That's why you got to really be uh, patient and have humility and really look at what we have done and what our ancestors have done before so we don't make the same mistakes. Israel could get on your nerve. Israel was getting on his nerve, chiding with him. Most of that told him, hey, speak to the rock and bring forth my water. But Israel got on ner Moses' nerve and hit the rock. Who was we? Bring forth this water from this rock? Too late now. He hit the rock twice with a staff. And both sides brought the water out because we were, like he said. When you were thirsty, verse 20, did I not cleave the rock and waters flowed out to your field? For the heat I covered you with the leaves of the trees. So, Moses didn't make it to the promised land. Because he said, speak to the rock. That would have been phenomenal. A phenomenal miracle. Israel could have said, when Israel, Moses just speak to the rock, the name of the Most High, about Shama Mashiach El Shia, then here, here come the water. But now he hit the rock, so the people think that Moses is doing something. Moses in the area got power. Power is the Most High, y'all was the power. Verse 21, I divided among you a fruitful land. I cast out the Canaanites, the Parasites, the uh, Philistines before you. What shall I yet do more for you? Said the Most High. So what I'm going to do more for you, I'm going to cast out all these nations, these people that were mightier than you. Scared. Came back, most of the, the, the spies that went out to spy the land, they were scared coming back. Joshua and Caleb wasn't. Thus said the Almighty Power, when you were in the wilderness, in the river of the Amorites, being a thirst and blaspheming my name. You know, blaspheming the Most High's name, it was thirsty. And blaspheming the Most High's name, I gave you not fire for your blasphemies but cast a tree in the water and made the river sweet. What shall I do unto thee? Oh, Jacob, say, what more can I do for you? Thou, Judah, would it not obey me? I will turn me to other nations, and unto those will I give my name, that they may keep my statutes. Ooh. So I'm going to turn to them. That's something. So, I want to look at, uh, we're going to go through some scriptures here. Go to uh, Exodus 14. And verse uh, 28, 29. It says, And the waters returned and covered the chariots and the horsemen and all the host of Pharaoh that came into the sea after them. There remained not so much as one of them, but the children of Israel walked upon dry ground, dry land, in the midst of the sea, and the waters were a wall unto them on their right hand and on their left. So the waters was on the right hand and the left. We walked in the middle on dry ground. Can you imagine? They show movies of them. You can see it. The waters just standing up. Most I had to make sure that they didn't cover us up. That's why I say they did good for us. We were rebellious, man. Exodus 13 and 21. And the Most High went before them by day in a pillar of a cloud. Now, the Most High, remember, 
what the Mashiach of Shai told us, we're gonna be, it's going to be very spiritual. As I said, you know, I showed you it initially in the beginning of this lesson concerning the Mashiach of Shai. And I asked where did he go? So, he told us in St. John, the first chapter of the 18th verse, no man has seen the Most High at any time, the only begotten Son. Like, you know, everybody knows John 3, 16, for the Most High so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, and whosoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So, Mashiach Elishai is the only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father. He hath declared him, okay? So now, when we look here, at Exodus 13 and 21, it says, And the Most High went before them by day in a pillar of a cloud to lead them the way, and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light to go by day and night. So now, I challenge you to realize that this is Mashiach Kalashai. But he's an angel of the Most High, or the same spirit of the Most High, which he makes his angel spirits, that we read in Psalms 104 and 4, the same one that's in Genesis, the first chapter, the second verse. Right? So look, it said, And the Most High went before them by day in a pillar of a cloud. But he's going, but, he's, but Amashiach was shy as an angel of the Most High, as the Spirit of the Most High is going before them in the pillar of cloud. Mary, nobody ever seen the Most High. Okay? He took not away the pillar of the cloud by day, so he take a Mashiach of Shai, which is a chariot of the Most High. We got to deal with that cloud, so go back to Psalms 104 and 3 and show what that cloud is. Psalms 104 and 3. Who make it the beams of his chambers in the waters, who make it the clouds his chariot, who walk up upon the wings of the wind. So the clouds are his chariots or vehicle. What they call a UFO, an unidentified flying object. We call them IFOs, identified flying objects. So when you see here, for those that can see in the spirit, it's gonna get more clear. In Exodus 13 and 21, and the Most High, Waha Mashiach Yavashai, and the Mashiach Yavashai went before them by day, or the Alahayim, the powers, the same powers that created the heavens and the earth, that we see in Genesis 1 and 1 and 1 and 2. And the Alahayim went before them by day in a cloud, pillar of a cloud, which is a chariot or vehicle, IFO, flying saucers, whatever you want to, however you want to call it, with the angels, and tell you. Also, in uh, go to Psalms, the 68th chapter. So you see who's in his clouds. To help you to understand more. In 17, the chariots which are these IFOs of the Most High are 20,000, even thousands of angels. See? The Most High is among them. As in Sinai in the holy place, see? So, we always be dealing with the angels, spirits of the Most High. So, which are the ministers of the Most High, bringing forth the word of the Most High. So, Exodus 13 and 22 says, He took not away the pillar of the cloud by day, nor the pillar of fire by night from before the people. So, we see seeing that it was a cloud in the daytime, and a lot of you probably seen chairs and didn't realize it. I seen, it was like, um, I was traveling, I looked over, I was, I was, the window of the plane, it looked just like a, a, a cloud, where it's like cities. Just like Sodom and Gomorrah, how the most High left Sodom and Gomorrah with cities. You can see there was a city. But you can see these clouds were just like cities. It was one city here and like one city on over there, you know, right facing it. Uh, look at uh, Exodus 14 and 
19. Exodus 14 and 19. Just to prove what my point. One proof. We're going to go into it a lot. It said, And the angel of the Most High, which went before the camp of Israel, you see, you can't deny this. Same spirit of the Most High that created everything in Genesis, the first chapter, the first verse, the second verse. And the angel of the Most High, which went before the camp of Israel, removed and went behind them in the pillar of the cloud, which are the angels, which are the angels, went from before their face and stood behind them. So it went from before us and went behind us. And it came between the camp of the Egyptians and the camp of Israel. And it was a cloud and darkness to them. But it gave light by night to these. So that the one came not near the other all the night. In the, in the daytime it was a cloud. When it was nighttime it turned into a, a pillar of fire. Look at... Uh, Verse 24. Well, let's read verse 23. And the Egyptians pursued and went in after them to the midst of the sea. So they most likely opened up the sea, the Red Sea, and we, we was walking on dry ground, remember? Even all Pharaoh's horses, his chariots, and his horsemen. Now, the angel of the Most High, I'm just going to keep it real with you, Hamashiach Yavashai, as an angel. He's not in the flesh, he's an angel. He's the spirit of the Most High. Even all Pharaoh's horses, his chariots, and his horsemen. And it came to pass that in the morning, watch, the Most High looked upon unto the host of the Egyptians, the army of the Egyptians, through the pillar of fire and of the cloud. Remember, the Mashiach of the is dead. The angel of the Most High, we just read that. Verse 19, and the angel of the Most High, which went before the camp of Israel, removed and went behind them, right? You make of this chariot's angel. Say, hey, chariot's are angels. So, this is a Mashiach that was shot as an angel. As the spirit of the Most High. That's getting ready to tear these Egyptians up. Verse 24. And it came to pass that in the morning, watch, the Most High, while Mashiach that was shy, or the angel of the Most High, as a Mashiach that was shy, would become the Most High looked up to the host of the Egyptians drew the pillar of fire. The fire was at night. And of the cloud, when it came day, to be daytime, and troubled the host of the Egyptians, troubled them, and took off their chariot wheels. Now, come on. Who was this? Verse 19, And the angel of the Most High, which went before the camp of Israel, removed and went behind them. So don't tell me how my Shai can't come here in his angelic power ready for war. The judge will make wars and tell us in Revelation 19 11. Here he is now bringing forth the destruction of the Egyptians that was chasing after us. Verse 25, and took off their chariot wheels that they drave them heavily so that the Egyptians said, let us flee from the face of Israel. For the Most High, while Mashiach was shy, the angel of the Most High fighting for them against the Egyptians. See? There it is. Some of it. We're going to continue, though. Go to uh, Numbers, the ninth chapter. Numbers, the ninth chapter. All this the Most High did for us. And we want to be rebellious be against them. Numbers 9 and 15. And on the day that the tabernacle was reared up, the cloud covered the tabernacle. And the cloud was in the day. Namely the tent of the testimony. And at even there was upon the tabernacle as it were the appearance of fire until the morning see so it was always the cloud covered it by day chariot of it as a cloud covered it by day 
and appearance of fire by night. And when the cloud was taken up from the tabernacle, when the cloud went up from the tabernacle, we had a tabernacle, and the cloud would come down and sit, up, sit upon the tabernacle, and it would be fire at night. So we could see our way. And when the cloud, verse 17, and when the cloud was taken up from the tabernacle, then after that the children of Israel journeyed. We moved. We traveled. And in the place where the cloud abode, when it stopped, when that cloud stopped, there the children of Israel pitched their tents. We will pitch our tents. As it said in Ezra. At the commandment of the Most High, the children of Israel journeyed. And at the commandment of the Most High, they pitched. As long as the cloud abode upon the tabernacle, they rested in their tents. And when the cloud tarried long upon the tabernacle, many days, then the children of Israel kept the charge of the Most High and journeyed not. They didn't, we didn't go anywhere. So it was when the cloud was a few days upon the tabernacle, according to the commandment of the Most High, they abode in their tents. And according to the commandment of the Most High, they journeyed. And so it was. And the cloud abode from the evening until the morning, and that the cloud was taken up in the morning, then they journeyed. Whether it was by day or by night that he, the cloud was taken up, they journeyed. When that cloud was taken up, we journeyed. Or whether it were two days or a month or a year that the cloud tarried upon the tabernacle, think about it. It was there, it was there for two days or a month or a year. We were waiting for the move, then we move. But whether it were two days or a month or a year, that the cloud tarried upon the tabernacle, remaining there on, children of Israel were bold in their tents and journeyed not. But when it was taken up, they journeyed. At the commandment of the Most High, while Mashiach was shy, they rested in their tents. And at the commandment of the Most High, they journeyed. They kept the charge of the Most High. At the commandment of the Most High, by the hand of Moses, Look at uh, Numbers 14 and 13. And Moses said unto the Most High, Then the Egyptians shall hear it. But thou brought it up this people and thy might from among them. And they will tell it to the inhabitants of this land. But they have heard that thou, Most High, art among this people. That thou, Most High, art seen face to face. And that thy clouds standeth over them. And that thou goest before them by daytime in a pillar of a cloud and in a pillar of fire by night. See? Now if thou shalt kill all this people as one man, then the nations which have heard the fame of thee will speak saying, because the Most High was not able to bring this people into the land which he sware to them, therefore he has slain them in the wilderness. Moses, is, he's, he's, he's really... Uh, Using a lot of wisdom, talking to the Most High. The Most High, he's about himself. Believe that. He, <laughs> he says his name is Jealous. And now I beseech thee, he cried to the Most High, let the power of my power be great, according as thou hast spoken, saying, the Most High is long-suffering and of great mercy, forgiving iniquity and transgression, and by no means clearing the guilty. Visit iniquity of the fathers upon the children, until the third and fourth generation. That's what he said. You let me know what he said. This is this is using wisdom. As we can do the same thing. Pardon I beseech thee, crying to the most I beseech thee, the iniquity of this people, according unto the greatness of thy mercy. See, we done sin against the most high, and Moses crying to the most high and said, Pardon I beseech thee the iniquity of this people according unto the greatness of thy mercy and as thou hast forgiven this people from Egypt even unto now. Most I said, I have pardoned according to thy word. See, it worked. But as truly as I live, all the earth shall be filled with the glory of the Most High because all those men which have seen my glory and my miracles which I did in Egypt and in the wilderness I have tempted me, 
now these ten times and have not hearkened to my voice, surely they shall not see the land which I swear unto their fathers, neither shall any of them that provoke me see it. He said, look, I'm going to kill all of them. He killed almost 600,000 men that came out of Egyptian captivity. He killed 599,998. Look who he saved. But my servant Caleb, because he had another spirit with him and had followed me fully, him will I bring into the land wherewith, whereinto he went. And his seed shall possess it. Now that. And he allowed uh, Joshua to go. But he told us in verse 28, says, Say unto them, as truly as I live, said the Most High, as ye have spoken in mine ears, murmuring, like it says, let's read that because uh, verse 26, but we, it says the same thing in 2nd Ezra, the first chapter, it says, and the Most High spake unto Moses and to Aaron, saying, How long shall I bear with this evil congregation which murmur against me? See? Same thing it said in the uh, Apocrypha. We murmured against them. How are you going to say this is not the word of the Most High? Coinciding right together. Both of them right together. See, it says, uh, that's what we're doing. Uh, We have numbers. Um, Fourteen and twenty-six. And the most I spake unto Moses and to Aaron, saying, How long shall I bear with this evil congregation which murmur against me? I have heard the murmurings of the children of Israel, which they murmur against me. Say unto them, he's what he say, say unto them, as I live, said the Most High. He said, as I live. And he lived forever, said the Most High. As ye have spoken in mine ears, so will I do to you. This is what he told them. Your carcasses, your dead bodies, shall fall in this wilderness. And all that were numbered of you according to your whole number, from 20 years old and upward, which have murmured against me, doubtless, you shall not come into the land concerning which I swear to make you dwell therein, say Caleb, the son of Zephaniah, and Joshua, the son of Nun. That's it. But your little ones, which ye have, which ye said should be a prey, remember those giving their children into the fire, them will I bring in, and they shall know the land which ye have despised. As for, but as for you, your carcasses, your dead bodies, they shall fall in this wilderness, and your children shall wander in the wilderness forty years and bear your quarters until your carcasses be wasted in the wilderness. Man. After the number of days in which ye searched the land, even forty days, each day for a year, shall ye bear your iniquities, even forty years, and ye shall know my preach of promise. Wow. See? That's the judgment of the Most High. Because we chose not to do what he said we were supposed to do. His commandments. See? Price we had to pay. Sad to say, but it's real.
look, look at uh, how it coincides with what you said in the Bible. Also, go to Numbers, the 14th chapter, verse 2. And all the children of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron. And the whole congregation said unto them, Would the Most High that we had died in the land of Egypt, or would the Most High we had died in this wilderness? And wherefore have the Most High brought us into unto this land to fall by the sword, that our wives and our children should be a prey? Were it not better for us to return into Egypt? They said one to another, let us make a captain and let us return into Egypt. So, went against the Most High. That's bad. That's terrible. But that's what we chose to do. That's what we chose to do. Instead of looking into, you know, following the Most High, His rules and regulations. That's all it is, rules and regulations. No, we want to find some other way. We want to do it some other way. And now we have to pay. Just a moment.